The virtual reality market has exploded this year with the entrance of the Oculus Rift, the HTC Vive, and the OSVR HDK2, all of which we've had on our teardown table. But now, Sony wants in on the game. Let's see how the new PSVR stands up to the competition and tear it down. The PSVR headset is a whopping 610 grams, not including the cord. That's heavier than any other VR set on the market. We start to take off a little weight by removing the rubber light shield. This shield shuts out the light for better user experience and bonus, you don't need tools to remove it. A set of JIS screws holds the front panel together and once they're removed, we're able to get the front panel off. Underneath we find the LED array. This cable array is held in place by clips that are easily disconnected. Unlike the Rift and Vive, which rely on invisible IR light for position tracking, the PSVR uses visible light LEDs. We now have an inside look at how the scope adjustment button works. Eye relief is the distance between your eye and the plane of the display. A large adjustment range means that users can fit glasses under their headsets with ease. Since we're sliding it, we might as well separate it from the headband. Next to come out is the motherboard, which is home to the Nuviton Nuke 123 series ARM Cortex-M0 microcontroller. And on the other side, the Toshiba made HDMI interface bridge. For the complete list of chips, head on over to the teardown at ifixit.com. After removing a sizable microphone that was mounted under the visor, we remove the display. The PSVR uses a single 5.7 inch OLED display that has a resolution of 1920 by 1080. Last to come out are the lenses. Unlike the lenses in the Vive and the Oculus CV1, these lenses aren't Fresnel. Instead, the PSVR uses large, smooth, dome-shaped lenses. We've come to the end of our teardown and now we turn our thoughts towards repairability. The PlayStation VR scored a 8 out of 10, and here's why. The PlayStation VR is thoughtfully constructed and fairly straightforward to disassemble. Many pieces, such as the cushions and light shield, snap firmly in and out with no fussy fasteners or adhesive. Standard JIS Zero screws are used throughout the entire device's construction. You can take it apart with a single driver that's likely already in your electronics toolkit. Adhesive is mild, used sparingly, and mostly easy to remove. Dabs of the sticky stuff help secure the weights, reflectors, and faceplate. However, the lenses are firmly glued in place. On the downside, it is a complicated piece of hardware with lots of extra trim pieces that would be difficult to reassemble without repair guides. And that's our teardown. For the complete teardown, including tons of beautiful, high quality images, head on over to ifixit.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date on all our latest teardowns and repair videos. You can follow us on Twitter at ifixit and give us a like on Facebook at facebook.com slash ifixit.